Hey, welcome back to this channel. Today is the part two of helping international students who want to study psychology in Australia by answering their questions that have come through into my email inbox. I'm just sharing the local knowledge that I do have about studying psychology in Australia. I hope that this video can act as like a springboard to get you started on your research for all the different things that you've got to consider when making the choice to move to Australia to come and study psychology. So with all of that said, let's get straight into this video. All right, in my last video, I got a lot of questions from a student called Garnia and I spent the whole video answering their questions. In today's video, let's move on and look at answering some other students' questions. All right, so first up, I've got a question from Aditya and they say, I am doing a Bachelor of Science in Psychology Honours with an individual dissertation in the final year and I want to apply for a Master's in Clinical Psychology. So according to the information that I've collected, it specifies that you need to have a four-year degree majoring in psychology, but my course is only three years. So my question is, can I still apply with my three-year degree without any further procedure or should I do a one-year postgraduate diploma to compensate the remaining eligibility criteria? Yeah, this is a great question. In Australia, it is a little bit annoying. We have to do a three-year undergrad degree and then a one-year honours year. And our honours year is like our dissertation year. And these four years in total make up our undergrad. And just to be clear, this is specific to psychology in Australia. I'm not too sure about other disciplines. I know that in other countries like the UK, you only have to do a three-year undergrad and your honours year is considered part of that three-year undergrad where you do your dissertation in the third year. I much prefer that system. However, in Australia, you have to do four. So to answer your question, what I'd recommend doing is getting in touch with APRA and asking them what they would recommend because they'll probably be able to give you a much clearer answer. You could also try reaching out to the universities and asking them as well, but I would recommend starting with APRA. So I'll leave some helpful information about APRA in the description of this video. And I want to add on to this and also say that if you have any other questions about studying psychology in Australia or about working as a psychologist in Australia, I'd recommend getting in touch with APRA. They're a great place to start and you can actually talk to somebody over the phone. They do have an international line you can reach them through. However, I'd recommend calling at 9 a.m. Sydney time because the wait time can really drag on. So make sure you get in touch with them as soon as they open up. All right, let's move on. Aditya had a couple of other questions, so I'll go through them as well. They said, secondly, I have significant doubts about the eligibility criteria for the recommended GPA required out of 4.0 and the IELTS band score because different websites have different answers. Yep, I can appreciate where you're coming from. Each university is going to require something different, which is frustrating. But this also means that some universities have very high requirements. Some universities' requirements will be slightly lower. So I guess that's the silver lining here. As I've said before, aim to get a first class honours at the very least an upper second. And this is the equivalent of a high distinction average. All right, their last question was, I plan to come to Australia after completing my master's in clinical psychology. Will I be eligible for permanent residency and what are the things or tests I have to do to get a license to become a certified or legal practitioner in your country? Or do I need to do another master's in the same subject in Australia to get the license? Or are masters from India enough for the eligibility criteria for the license as well? All right, I do have an answer for this question, but please keep in mind, I'm not an expert in this area. I'm just sharing with you my big understanding of this. So in terms of immigration, from what I understand, you need to put an application through APRA to see if they'll allow you to practice as a psychologist in Australia. And this is assessed on a case by case basis. So it's not a one size fits all. It's gonna depend on a lot of different things like where you did your post-grad education, how much clinical work have you done? What are your years of experience in this field? There's lots of factors that they take into account when they're assessing your application. It's it's definitely worth having a look at APRA's website. I spoke to one of my colleagues who moved from India to Australia to work as a psychologist and she shared with me that she's currently working as a provisional psychologist and she has to submit a form to APRA which is like the application. I'm just gonna pull it up on my screen so that you can have a look. Okay so this is what the application form looks like. As you can see it's a really lengthy form and one piece of advice she shared with me was that it's really important to document all the work you do 
with clients, so all your client hours, all your placements, everything like that. Then she shared another form with me that shows you sort of like the pathway that you go down to get your application assessed by APRA. I'm not too familiar with these forms, but what I'm gonna do is leave links in the description of this video so that you can follow up and read more about this. I realize I'm going on a long-winded way of responding to this question, but there's a lot to it. I wanna make sure I give you as much information as possible. The short answer is if you wanna find out if your qualifications from your home country are enough to help you gain registration as a psychologist in Australia, it's best to start off by talking to APRA. My best guess would be that you'd probably have to do the national psychology exam and you might also have to do a placement in Australia to get your hours up. All right, let's move on. So Miriam asks, I would like to know what is the best pathway to become a psychologist in Australia, a registered one? My recommendation would be if you're starting from scratch, you haven't started university before, do your three year undergrad bachelor in science majoring in psychology, then do the one year honors program and then go on and apply for a one year professional masters. This will help you become a registered psychologist. Okay, so the next question is from Godwin and they say, I wish to pursue a master's degree specifically in Australia. What will be your advice? I have over 13 years experience in counseling. I practice in Kenya. So for this specific scenario where someone's got a lot of experience working in mental health, doing something like counseling or working as a psychologist, my general advice would be to try and get your permanent residency in Australia first. You could try and go for something like a skilled visa and I'm gonna leave links down below in the description. And then once you get your permanent residency, that's when I'd recommend looking into your study options. And as I've said already, I'd recommend going for a one year professional masters as part of the five plus one program. This is an awesome program. Once you've done that one year of study, you can then go in and do a paid internship. And after the one year of that paid internship, you then get your general registration as a psychologist. All right, we're coming towards the end of the questions. We've just got a few more left. So Noor asks, I found that I can do a graduate diploma in psychology rather than a bachelor's because I already have a bachelor's in another degree. But my concern is that I won't be prepared to be a psychologist because I'm missing out on three years in the Bachelor of Psychology. I heard some people say that you don't really learn how to be a psychologist in the Bachelor, but I'm just unsure. Do you have any thoughts on this or can you give me some advice? Okay, I don't want to confuse people too much. Noor's correct. If you've got a bachelor's degree in something other than psychology, you can do a graduate diploma in psychology, which typically goes for one year. And then you need to do an advanced graduate diploma, which also typically goes for one year. And then once you've done this, it allows you to apply for master's programs. I've made a whole other video for this. I'll leave a link somewhere in the description. Go and check it out after this one if you want to find out more information about that. But this is my response to this question. I don't know what it's like in other countries, but in Australia, during your undergrad and your honors year, it's very much focused on developing research skills and also learning the broad different areas in psychology and all the theory and the different models and all of those sorts of things. And then you start learning how to do the practical work during your post-grad. So in short, I'm not too sure, but my best guess would be that you probably aren't missing out on too much. I've looked at some of the graduate diplomas and the advanced graduate diplomas is programs and they really do cover a lot even though it's quite condensed. Plus it's also likely that you've already got some research skills from doing your undergrad in another discipline. So honestly my best guess is that you're probably not missing too much but if you are really worried about it I would advise you contacting the university and having a chat with them because obviously they're going to know the most about this. All right that is the end of the most recent questions that I've received from students. If you do try and send me an email I'm so sorry right now I've just got too much on my plate to respond to people because I'm preparing for an exam and I'm also working full time. But I really hope that part one and part two has been a helpful guide and giving you some starting points to think about if you're an international student or if you live overseas and you want to come to Australia to study or work as a psychologist. My heart does really go out to international students because I can really appreciate how difficult it is to come to Australia and study here. I'm going to leave so many helpful links in the description. Go that, check it out. I hope that you have have an amazing week and I will talk to you in another video. Bye!